Welcome everybody to Extreme Power No Handling and today we're dealing with the 1967 Volkswagen Carmen gear. Now it has 1,060 horsepower and 889 pounds feet of torque and the car itself weighs 1,991 pounds and uh, yeah it can do 0 to 16.3.831 seconds, 0 to 106.317 seconds going up to a top speed of 151 miles an hour. So uh, yeah this is broadly similar to the Volkswagen Beetle that we had a couple of episodes back because uh, it's obviously based on the same uh, platform but there are some subtle differences this weighs 22 pounds more than that Volkswagen Beetle and there's 2 percent extra weight up front at 42 percent over the Beetle so a couple of differences like that and plus obviously this is a more of a sporting vehicle not just in looks but in terms of uh, you know execution so maybe it'll be a little bit different but I'm still expecting the same weird handling physics that uh, ha happened with the Beetle and uh, yeah, maybe broadly the same kind of time. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, see what this vehicle can do. Right. So, yeah, same conditions as usual with this track. All rain, heavy. Obviously, this car is never meant for this kind of power. Now, obviously, uh, the Carmen Gear did have more power than the Beetle, but. You're still asking this car to do more than a thousand horsepower than it had originally. Uh, the front end is already rising up, which is a surprise considering not only does the car weigh more, but there's more weight up front. But I guess it's still, you know, under 2,000 pounds, and uh, obviously the power of the car is overwhelming the weight of the vehicle. Generally, it's putting the power down okay. Brakes are okay, but I feel like if I overdo it, they will uh, catch me out. So I'm gonna have to be careful with them. it feels okay but there are obviously some deficiencies that if I uh, do push the car too hard will uh, become apparent but yeah 1 minute 32.617 is our first lap time and uh, yeah it's actually a clean one for a change normally we're all over the place and I just jinx myself <laughs> Hole, it feels a little bit more controllable than the Beetle. an improvement. Obviously it doesn't count because it's dirty lap over a clean lap. At least it records it during my uh, time recording this so I can always look back and get a specific time if I do have a dirty one over a clean one that's faster. 
because this car is a lot more controllable than the likes of the Beetle, should have no problem putting in another clean, fast lap. Well, that's a pretty good time, 1 minute 29.777 seconds. We've still got more laps to go and obviously, uh, hopefully, more improvements as well. Doesn't really like to turn in on the hammerhead though. Fair bit of understeer there. No improvement that time round. I'm head is where this car struggles the most, to be honest. Well I thought I, I saw a quicker time there, I think it was 1 minute 29.260 so I will look back at that on the editing. But if it is, then that means that it is quicker than the Volkswagen Beetle, uh, but still slower than the likes of the Chevrolet Fleetline Special, the Toyota Baja truck and the Jeep Shell Cat. But overall a solid car, quite frankly I felt it was a lot you know, smoother in terms of handling than the uh, Beetle. Still had some problems, the brakes were a little bit shoddy if you did over, uh, you know, try and brake late a bit, you know, further down the line, it would struggle to bring the car down to a uh, crawl. Uh, and uh, obviously the front of the car was rising up at times, which did uh, limit some uh, availability in terms of ha uh, control. And the puddles did ov offer up some oversteer issues, but apart from those issues, it was pretty good and uh, it did feel a lot better than the Beetle, whether or not I'm uh, remembering how uh, that Beetle uh, episode went, I don't know. 
but it did uh, generally feel a lot better and a lot more controllable as well. We were drifting at points and uh, yeah, felt like we were able to handle it. So uh, yeah, pretty solid vehicle and it obviously has beaten the Beetle. So whether or not it was control more controllable or not is irrelevant because it's beating it. So yeah, solid car all around. Easily one of my uh, favourite cars on this game. I'm glad they really brought it back from Forza Motorsport 4. It's been a uh, long time coming for it to come back and I am glad that they did because... Yeah, like I said, it's one of my favourites. No, by no means one of the quickest cars out there in stock form, but still a cracking car. And uh, even with all this extra power and no extra handling, it's uh, still a uh, pretty fun vehicle to drive as well. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.